Yeah, I love that uh, that jam on the intro there. Um, anyway, this is the Hellcat to 5.7 Hemi uh, injector tuning, where I'm going to show the parameters that I've changed to get these Hellcat jack injectors working um, on my on my charger that I put a, a GT500 supercharger on. So these four are the primary um, tables that you're going to be modifying once you get your Hellcat injectors uh, put in. I pulled this data from a um, another Hellcat stock tune. So we're going to use injector pulse width versus fuel mass. It's reciprocal fuel mass versus injector pulse width. Startup injector pulse width. And then injector pulse width offset. So I moved these in this orientation because there's so many changes in the background. Um, you'll be able to see exactly uh, what we're changing here. You also do the startup injector uh, pulse width scalar okay so if we take a look here i went ahead and loaded up a compare file this is going to show the hemi 5.7 out of my police charger the uh, fuel mass amounts per injector pulse width time uh, injector pulse width time and the uh, associated uh, fuel mass these two um, tables have to be equal to each other. Uh, startup injector pulse width and then injector pulse width offset. So these are all the stock um, settings. And so I'm going to go ahead and show the Hellcat settings, the stock Hellcat settings, so you can see how much of a change there is. If you need the stock Hellcat tune, just send me an email. It'll be in the description. And then uh, I'll send that to you. So here we go. Now that we've got this Hellcat data in, um, now let me take a step back. How do I change the fuel mass and, and all that stuff? Field here and click on it, and this will be like the vertical access and axis, and then that'll have all the numbers in here that you uh, can change and modify to the uh, Hellcat data. So, so for a quick example, how to make the changes in here. Um, We'll go with the second to the last field here. Uh, right now it's Hellcat data, and we'll go ahead and put back in some just 5.7 data. So what you'll do is you'll grab the uh, this last field and then put in 0.68743. Okay. So you'll notice it changed. And the graph changed as well, uh, indicating that these new numbers are um, different from the originals. So let's go ahead and close this out. And here's our 6874, right? So these two charts are incompatible because the 6874 is not the same as this field in the fuel mass versus injector pulse width. We'd have to make this change too, which would be easy, 0.687. Four. Okay, so now these two um, charts match, and therefore the um, uh, computer can use them both. An easy way to verify whether or not you've got this right is I'll take this chart right here, put it right up next to this one, and then take a look at these two inner fields should match or be super, super close, and these two outer fields should match. So zeros, obviously, 43, 425, and etc. Match the inners, and then match the outers. So now that we've got an idea how these two fields have to match each other and how you modify those, um, startup injector pulse width. Um, this is the original, this is the Hellcat data, and then this is the um, Hemi data, the 5.7. And then injector pulse with off offset. Again, the, uh, the two data is here. You can use for your own uh, comparison. Injector pulse width minimum. You can modify this. I've had good luck with leaving it at 0 0.408 milliseconds. It can be in the 500s as well. So uh, modify that as, as you're required. But right now, the car starts and runs and drives and, and works real well with these settings. 
So let's move on here. So once you put this in, um, I'm going to show you some wide open throttle tuning. So I use a oxygen sensor. So here's a data log, and this is a data log that uh, was not the final iteration. So I can show a little errors here, and what's going on. So on the graph, I've got artificial neural network uh, part throttle. And so you set this, uh, this guy up with the long-term uh, fuel trim sensor, right? And then highs and low values. And then the uh, fuel mass cylinder one also has to be logged. And then you set up the, uh, the values for here. So this is going to give you your part throttle, um, how far the long-term fuel trims are adding to the uh, the initial tune. So this gives you an idea if you're high or low on fuel or rich or lean and it also does a good job of showing you depending on where your cursor goes what field you're going to need to modify. So I'll have this graph up although it's not giving me accurate data for wide open throttle it is giving me accurate movement on which cell um, that's being uh, hit. So the uh, fuel mass, the 0 0.0274 cell here that has the 4.10 value, right? So the fuel mass, and then this is the uh, pulse width time. This is shown right over here. So I can, I can use this data, even though it isn't part throttle. Anyhow, so like right now, it's at 0.2, and I'm at uh, a wide band of 14.24 air fuel ratio. The pink line is boost, the green line is throttle position, the uh, red line is my RPM, and down here are my um, driver demanded torque, expected torque, and actual torque lines. Um, these numbers are way off to actual horsepower torque, uh, sorry, actually uh, to, to torque. Uh, but there's, in an upcoming video, I'll explain why these numbers don't matter. Just matching these uh, lines together is important. So here we are at the 0.163 um, value, but we really don't care because our throttle position is not in the um, wide open throttle or PE uh, mode. I did change the throttle position sensor for uh PE and wide open throttle, so I get more fuel dumped in earlier. Um, I can show that in a in a later tune as or to the full tune as well. But so here we are, boom, we're at full full throttle. Our wide bands at uh, 2.24 or sorry 12.24, 20, and you can see the injectors are catching up with the hit, and we're at like one 11.66. This is both with uh, the injectors and my um, meth injection um, qu squirting at the same time. So as you can see, the RPMs are increasing, engine demand is increasing, and I'm getting up to about 12.72. So I'm at about 12 pounds of boost, full throttle, and 12.72 is not where I wanna be. I wanna be a lot uh, richer, I wanna be back down here. So you can see right here is where the shift change occurs, and the engine uh, is demanding less fuel, and so the RPM is increasing, and then so is fuel demand uh, down here because the AFR is increasing as well. So I'm looking at the area here where my fuel demand right, is, is increasing. So it corresponds with the 0 0.0275 um, cell. So pop back over to here. 0 0.0274 cell, and right here is where we'd make our first change. Looking at this, I'm coming up on, you know, I want to be about 11, 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half, and I'm all the way at 12 and a half, so it's one AFR point approximately away, so I'd whack this with about 10% uh, fuel increase. Go over here, hit this guy, 1.1, give that to it. So we'll have to make a corresponding change, make this 4.51 down here, 
So I'll go ahead and copy that, and go to Injector Pulse Width, and then paste that, so 4.51. So now both, um, well, let me turn my phone down. It seems to be going off. So 4.51 and then 4.51. So now these two charts are in agreement with each other. So we shouldn't see any problems with the um, with the computer able or uh, computer's ability to uh, to modify fueling. And then we'll go ahead and test it and run it, and then see where we got to make uh, more changes. Now you can see from these two, last two um, fields, 0 0.0274 to 1.0. That's a pretty monstrous jump if you're looking at how the um, the entire chart is graduated. Usually it's graduated pretty, uh, the slope is, you know, pretty steady, but this is a pretty monstrous jump. You can run back into the um, charts here and change these to add a smoothness. So instead of it going from 0 0.027 to 1 .0, you could do like leave 0 0.02 here, go to point um, one or five people have done it and you see it in the uh, forums like the HP tuner forums when I've done it I get some real weird results so at this point I'm going to keep on keeping on just adding 10% fuel to my uh, um, tuning um, before I have to jump into uh, changing these tables to something other than stock I'm sure it's doable it's just Whatever I did messed it up. So right now I'm going to just stick with what I know, which is, you know, whacking it with 10% fuel. Make sure this dip doesn't get too much lower. You'll notice this dotted line is my target air fuel mixture. I, uh, I had that. I put that on the uh, um, charts so I could see it real easily. Um, so anyhow, I'll keep hitting it with uh, fuel. There's not too many other tools you can use for the artificial neural network tuning at least none that I'm aware of, that increase the uh, uh, increase or decrease fueling. So that's what we got here, and that's what I'll keep on doing. So this is a pretty quick video on a pretty uh, complex topic, but to run this down quickly, you know, you'll have to modify injector pulse width, uh, the fuel mass versus injector pulse width, uh, injector pulse width uh, scalar, um, injector pulse width offset, and the startup base. And if you have HP tuners, it uh, gives you an example of what the problems or what the uh, what those fields change. Uh, and also, you can always you know email me for uh, a little bit of a explanation. I'll tell you what I know. Um, so, uh, anyways, use those and then get a good uh, wideband oxygen sensor um, so you can log that uh, those variances uh, from your you know your desired AFR set up some good graphs and uh, get to it and uh, see what happens hey thanks a lot for watching